Kiva Eldar in Tel Aviv. He's a senior columnist for Al Monitor's Israel Pulse. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, first of all, can you clarify, is it certain that Arab-Israeli parties will do what they haven't done for decades, actually, and that is support a prime minister in solidarity to basically defeat Netanyahu? The good news is that uh, out of 13 new members of Knesset in the next Knesset, Arab members of Knesset, 10 of them have recommended to uh, appoint or to give the mandate to Benny Gantz. Um, people were hoping that all of them will do this, but today, three of them, the uh, representatives of uh, Balad, the uh, Islamic Party, have uh, pulled back and said they cannot recommend the general, the party that includes so many generals, former chief of staff. So uh, Netanyahu is taking the lead by one member of Knesset ahead of Benny Gantz. Okay. So 10 out of 13 uh, in the Arab Israeli party. I mean, but we kept hearing that Avigdor Lieberman uh, was going to play the actual kingmaker. Uh, in this election, but with the the joint list now stepping up, are we really seeing Arab Israelis kind of claim their strength here, finally flex their muscle? Um, if you compare this to, to the past, uh, since uh, 92, when uh, Yitzhak Rabin included the uh, Arab parties, at that time we had four Arab parties, in his coalition. They were not part of the government, but they supported the Oslo Agreement, as we say, from outside. Not from the opposition, not from the coalition. This is made in Israel kind of politics, that uh, you are both inside and outside. Since then, the Israeli Arabs were excluded. Um, not many people give enough credit to Mr. Lieberman, who should get the credit for forming the uh, Arab United Party, um, the alliance of four Arab uh, parties, since he initiated to um, change the uh, threshold, to raise the, th the threshold uh, to a point where the Arabs, all four Arab parties, will drop from out of the Knesset, and what happened is that since they realized that they are risking the future of the party, of the Arab, the representation, uh, represented, uh, representing the uh, Arab minority, they have uh, allied together, and now they are in, on th in th uh, 13 members. But we have to keep in mind that this is a very functional unity. Right. It's not ideological. You have communists and uh, uh, Muslims in the same party, so it's not a big surprise that they can't get their eggs together. Okay. It is politics, after all. Uh, let me ask you, though, Netanyahu and Lieberman have rallied, as you know, a large right-wing base uh, by building on fear, really, of Arab Israelis, whom they claim just absolutely want to destroy uh, the Jewish state and that it should be an exclusively Jewish state uh, in the first place. I mean, how much have they succeeded in really turning Israelis against Israelis? I think that they did the, the opposite. It backfired on them because uh, they have motivated the Arabs to go to the uh, balloting stations in big numbers. They even initiated, they, they um, have... Uh, Initiated by the by by the way a kind of um, a humanitarian uh, organization of Israeli Jews leftists to uh, mobilize to organize busing and uh, to take uh, Bedouins from remote uh, Arab villages to the balloting stations that they couldn't walk there so there was a massive volunteering of uh, Israeli Jews to bring Arabs separately, women and men, to the balloting stations. So um, I think that uh, actually the Israeli public showed some kind of 
liberalism, maturity, that uh, you can't buy them this kind of cheap incitement. So I think okay. that we passed this test of incitement. Akiva Eldar, thank you so much for joining us there from Tel Aviv. We greatly appreciate it.